NBA 2K6 is a fabulous start on the new consoles. The better graphics and the fluidity of the animation shine and show a glimpse of what the 360 and PS3 are capable of. In gameplay, a change I have to mention is the ISO motion system, which is different to past iterations. You no longer have a turbo button in the traditional sense, instead the right and left triggers serve as aggressive modifiers. And with a nice combination of joystick movements, now you get a big variety of moves you can perform. And it's more comfy to do the moves with the new system. Also another great thing in the game is the AI. Players react in a more authentic way. And more famous players react like in real life. Like for example Kobe will try to take over games by himself. And other famous players react like their real life counterpart. They react in a specific way different to the other players on the field. In rest, the franchise mode is better, you get a 24-7 mode where you create your own player and get to the top and get players for to, to form the best team. In rest you get a season mode, tournament and even the street mode which makes the game feel extremely varied. In NBA 2K7 they've made slight tweaks to make the game better. They improved the animations to an insane amount. Now almost all players on the field have a specific way to handle the ball. In rest, the isomotion controls have been further improved, so that you are now able to do more stuff with the joysticks. In rest, you get the many game modes from the previous game. Also a big improvement comes in the 24-7 mode, where they added a story. It takes you around 10 hours to finish this mode alone, and this can give you an idea how much content the game has, how much the game has to offer in gameplay hours. Also the AI seems a little better in the game compared to 2K6. In NBA 2K8 they added slam dunk contests, but the story you had in the previous game, the 10 hour long story is gone and you don't get another one instead. But you get slam dunk contests which is a mini game and aside of the story that is gone and the slam dunk contest which is a cool new feature you also get new animations that make the game more believable more signature moves meaning that more characters are animated to act just like their real life counterpart in rest the AI is tougher and the game looks more polished NBA 2K9 is solid, but it doesn't bring anything new aside the roster updates and the ability to play 5 on 5 online. And of course the menu pictures, but in rest I will need to be incredibly nitpicking to spot differences. Gameplay wise I mean, because graphically you can clearly see the boost. NBA 2K10 Draft Combined is actually a demo of 2K10. It was released before the game to showcase especially the character creation tools, you get 300 customization options that include dunking, shooting and dribbling styles. And the options are very detailed compared to the other games. And you can participate in some training challenges after you've created your player. NBA 2K10 brings a new mode, the My Player mode, where you create your own character and get to become a legend. This mode still has to improve in some aspects, like for example in the grading system, but it's a good start. And another aspect where the game needs improvements is in the performance department. The game has frequent bugs and has a choppy frame rate on too many occasions. NBA 2K11 is fantastic, it's amazing, the controls have been made more responsive and they cleared almost 99% of the bugs. Also the game features Michael Jordan and you can replay some of the best moments in basketball with him. In rest the franchise mode is more detailed and you get everything the other games have, plus the Michael Jordan story matches, the challenges. So this game is just like a love letter for the fans. And it's a big jump in improvement from 2K10 to 2K11. NBA 2K12 is improved in almost every aspect. 
If you have 2K11 and think that this game has just slight changes, well, those changes really make the experience significantly better. First off, the presentation is better. The menus are better and faster and easier to browse, the crowds are better and react more realistic, the controls are better with the new stick shooting mechanics. A big downside in the game is that the franchise mode is now only online and you could compete with friends and yeah it's a nice feature. It was great back then but playing it now in 2020 the online franchise mode isn't as great of a feature anymore. But even if the franchise mode is online, NBA Greatest isn't. Remember how in the previous game you had the Jordan challenges? Well, now you don't play only as Michael Jordan, but with 14 others. And the challenges are more fun than in 2K11. And on PS3, you even have PS Move controls. The controls didn't feel that great, but hey, it's something. Also, 2K12 has a DLC, The Legends Showcase which is this shell-shaded beast. You play the entire DLC in Times Square in front of a crowd. The DLC focuses on some of NBA's best players from the last 40 years or so. And it brings new game modes too, like teammate challenges where you pick up two famous superstars and play a 2-on-2 with another pair of famous superstars. The 3-on-3 era challenges where three-man teams from each decade compete to figure out which era is the greatest. You also get games like Horse and 21 Round Out the Badge. It's a great DLC. NBA 2K13 is the same solid experience, but some of the design choices are weird. You can play as Justin Bieber for example. I don't know what Justin Bieber has to do with basketball and why he's a playable character and why his team is better than most teams in the game. I mean, why make him a playable character instead of Obama and the president gang like in NBA Jam that in my opinion is cooler but yeah personal opinions aside when i googled why justin bieber got in the game i found this it would appear that nba 2k13 executive producer sean jay-z carter knowles saw fit in his artistic vision to include the international sensation in the game but not in the game soundtrack clever and the celebrity team as i said has better stats than many teams in the game but uh, also you have the option to create your own shoe in the game. In rest, aside of the presentation choices, there is a new control scheme. The controls are some sort of hybrid within the live series and the 2K series. In short, you can make dribbles with the right stick. In rest, it, as I said, it's the same solid experience, aside of the design choices and the new controls. NBA 2K14 brings new the LeBron path to greatness mode, where you don't replay historic moments like in the Jordan challenges in 2K11, but instead play an hypothetical future of LeBron. It's similar to the My Player game mode, but your player isn't custom made, it's LeBron James. In rest, it's the same solid game you usually get each year. The improvements in 2K15 are more subtle, but they are still present. For example, in the My Coach game mode, you have more options than before. You have a new shooting meter, but overall the changes don't feel that big. Though one mode feels new, the My Career mode, because it's a different story from past years. It's a new plot, you already know the plot, that you become a champ, but still, the dialogues and characters and cutscenes are new. So it, it, it's nice, I always liked that some NBA games had stories with dialogues and cutscenes and stuff like that. I, I like it, I, I like the feature. And it's as good as always in this game. NBA 2K16 brings the 2K battles, which are an imitation of the Play Now feature on the new generation consoles. And the feature is that it was under maintenance when the game came out and nowadays the servers still are under problems, so the only new feature is present only on paper, because it didn't work at first and now it doesn't work either, it's, it's only on paper. In rest the game is pretty much like last year. 
Sure, many characters have new models. There is a new commentary in the background and other slight visual changes are present, but gameplay wise I mean, it's pretty much the same game. NBA 2K17 doesn't bring anything new, and same goes for 2K18. They were made only because there was still demand for them. Even in 2017, some people still wanted to play NBA on their 360s and PS3s. Probably they didn't make the jump from PS3 and uh, PS4. And EA, even if they ported the games, didn't improve the games. But truth is that they reached their peak on the 360 and PS3. I mean, they were beasts right from the start and pushed the consoles to their limits. And even if 2K17 and 2K18 don't bring anything new on the table in gameplay, they are still solid basketball experiences. I mean, if you don't know the history of the 2K series, and you played random 2K titles, or if you've never played a 2K game, even if you pick up this two, they will still be amazing games. The only reason why people consider them worse, or well, less nice than others to use more gentle terms, is because by comparison with the previous games, that all brought big improvements from one title to the other, these two aren't distinct from the others, aside of the packaging, but they are still great games. Ok, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, click the join button and choose one of the perks. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, I've left the links to those in the video description. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching!